Hi, my name is Billy Yang. I'm a filmmaker, I'm an ultra runner, and I am about to embark on my very first through hike on the famous John Muir Trail here in California. As you can see, there's a lot of gear laid out here in front of me, and this is essentially what's going to keep me alive for the 12 days I am on the John Muir Trail. It would be a total of 220 miles as we're entering in from Cottonwood Lakes towards Mount Whitney, which is the official start of the 211 mile John Muir Trail. And we will be going from south to north to Yosemite Valley, and we will be covering it in a span of 12 days. I have been invited by my good friends, Elon and Gabby from the Bay Area, and the three of us are going to do this together. Now, I didn't have a whole lot of time to plan or to really test out the gear because it was in a rather condensed period of time, but from the minute I decided I was in, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole, I started watching all the videos, the, the do's and don'ts of through hiking, of backpacking, of camping. I think I was somewhere in the middle road of balancing comfort and trying to also be cognizant of keeping things rather light. I didn't want to invest a ton of money into this because who knows if this will be one and done, if I will really take to it. But as it turns out, walking in the woods is very expensive. Especially walking in the woods and trying to keep things light is very expensive. So without further ado, this is going to be the gear that I am bringing to the John Muir Trail for my very first time. Let's start with the sleeping bag because this is something that I had originally owned. It is a Kelty Cosmic Down 20 degree Fahrenheit rated sleeping bag. I've had this for a few years now and I think what will be kind of fun is to actually weigh everything in real time and see what it comes out to. I haven't done this myself. I have a rough guesstimate of where things will fall but uh, thought we could put this all together in this video. So why don't we start by weighing this. And for the sleeping bag, we have 42.85 ounces. Next up is the tent. Now, we uh, went through a couple of iterations of this. Uh, my mom gifted me the tent, which was a huge help. Thank you, mom. She's an avid backpacker herself. What was this called? Oh, there we go. Copper Spur HV Ultralight One Person Tent. Okay, so let's talk about the sleeping pad. This is where I plunked down a bit of money because the previous sleeping bag that I had, which was a thermo rest, I forget the exact model, but it had a very slow leak at the top and it just proved to be too unreliable. And after some video research, I found this bad boy. It is a Nemo Tensor Alpine insulated the long wide version. I've already tried this out on a camping trip. It is very comfortable. It does come in a little bit heavier, but I think it'll be worth it. And this one weighs 26.10 ounces. Next up, I have a blow up pillow and this one weighs in at 3.7 ounces. So that covers sleep and shelter. Why don't we move on to some of the other items? This bag is kind of a catch all miscellaneous bag. It has the bug net. It has a patch kit. It has some sunscreen, some lube, the kitchen and I went back and forth between this and a jet foil, but I recently decided to go with a, it's like a 700 milliliter pot. It's very lightweight. I paid money for that. I have two smaller gas canisters, a spork, collapsible cup, and two butane gas lighters and a lighter. We need the headlamp. This is my Petzl. The Petzl comes in at exactly four ounces. The bathroom kit, the trowel, the waste bag, uh, a small bottle of hand sanitizer, and of course, TP. This is my bathroom kit. It has a toothpaste, toothbrush, contact lens solution, you name it. This is my backup clothing or some of the longer layers. We have my beanie in here. We have pair of gloves. We have a long sleeve shirt with a hoodie. Uh, what else? We have second pair of socks, second pair of underwear, some leggings for sleeping at night along with some sleep socks. 
So this is a North Face version of the Nano Puffy. It is a little bit heavier, I think, a little bit bulkier, but it does the job. Also, we have to realize that we are in the mountains and you never know when the afternoon thunderstorms will roll in. This is an ultimate direction rain jacket. It is a great investment. It will also serve as my windbreaker. And this coupled with the pack cover, I will weigh these guys together. Sticking with clothing, I decided to go with a Path Projects Cascade T as my main outerwear. I have never tried on convertible pants, but that is what I'm going with. These are the REI version. They're fairly lightweight and pretty comfortable actually. Um, the only knock on these is that they don't have the zipper on the bottom to be able to easily convert these into shorts without removing your shoes. I didn't really think about it when I bought it, but it's comfortable and it's lightweight, so I dig it. I also have the Drymax socks. These are socks number one. Path Project Base Liners. I believe these are called the Torch versions and I have the backup in that previous bag. And I have the Path Projects hat. Um, I forget the model of this. It is their trucker hat. It fits me well and uh, it's breathable. So I will be using this. I have some Gooder sunglasses and I will be testing out the Coros Vertex for the very first time. Um, this is on loan from Coros. So thank you guys for that. Apparently it can hold up to 200 hours worth of data. And there's a function here when you're hiking to resume the activity later. It'll be interesting to see what this will look like if I can actually stitch together the entire 220 mile journey. May require a, a charge here and there. And that's going to be thanks to my battery block by Rav Power. This is kind of a heavy sucker, but I bought this before I decided to backpack. And that will be powered sporadically by the Gold Zero Nomad solar charger. This is not light. I will also be bringing a GoPro. And this is my biggest current dilemma is I have a point and shoot that a very generous supporter named Mark lent me. Um, this is a Sony, I forget the exact model. It's a point and shoot, the RX100. As you can see, it's fairly compact and lightweight. The only problem with this is that the audio is not that great. And one of the cameras that I'm currently thinking about using is, is being used right now, but do I use a bigger camera for better audio and better picture quality, or do I go smaller with, quite frankly, poor sound? And uh, yeah, I mean, this is also a game time decision, but let's go ahead and weigh the point and shoot camera. Next up, we have the Thermal Rest C Pad. This was also a recent decision, but uh, once I figured out that this served multiple functions, including serving as kind of a doormat for the, uh, the tent area when you're getting in and out where you could put shoes on, it could also serve as blocking wind for your stove during windier days. And of course the intended use of being a seat pad and um, also just incredibly light. I feel like this was a worthwhile thing to bring along. I wanna shout out my friend Sally for gifting me these bad boys. These are Lecky poles. The cool thing with these is that you have these straps that you put on your hands and you can clip the poles onto the gloves and it makes it so that you don't necessarily have to grip the pole as you're using it. And you can easily use this to pop in and out and have that connectivity right there. Oh, and I forgot to call these out. These are Luna sandals. These will be my uh, camp shoes. But I thought these could be a good backup in case I had really severe blisters. Their intended use is actually for running on trails. So um, thanks to Barefoot Ted for gifting me these. Let's talk food. This was generously given to me by a friend of a friend. This is more or less what's going to sustain me for the first six days. I do have a resupply point about 110 miles in. So far it's worked out pretty great. I found this nice little hack of attaching some pennies 
which serve as the locking mechanism for this guy. And this is definitely bulky. This is definitely heavy. This is the backpacker's cache. And, uh, but even the strongest grizzly is not gonna penetrate this bad boy. Finally, all of this will be going into this guy. This is the Osprey Atmos 65 liter bag. It has some really nice padding here. Your back doesn't get sticky and sweaty and it can breathe. Uh, really love that function. And for me, I mean, honestly, for my first time, I thought, why skimp on comfort? Even though it's going to weigh a little bit more than your ultra, ultra light bags, it'll at least give you a frame and something where you can make adjustments and tweaks to keep me comfortable during my first outing. So there you have it, you guys. This is gonna be the gear that's going to keep me going for the entirety of the John Muir Trail, hopefully, knock on wood. All the calories, all the sodium and the salty goodness to give me the energy, the pulse to keep me upright, to keep my butt comfortable as possible. Hopefully all the clothes to keep me warm and dry. And of course my shelter to keep me hopefully resting easy and um, without any incident. And we'll see, I, I'll learn as I go. I'm sure there'll be things I regret bringing along. I'm sure there'll be things that I regret not bringing along. It's just one of those things you plan the best you can and you say, to heck with it, I'm going for it, and I'm gonna to try to enjoy myself as much as possible. So, I look forward to sharing the journey with you guys. Stay tuned and subscribe to this channel if you wanna see future content. Thank you for watching, you guys. Hope to see you all out on the trails at some point.